Have you ever heard of a country that existed between Canada and the US? Yes, you heard it right. Hey there fellow explorers, welcome back to my channel. Today we're venturing off the beaten path to explore a forgotten chapter in North American history. We're talking about the Republic of Indian Stream, a tiny nation that briefly bloomed between the behemoths of Canada and the United States. So buckle up folks, because this is a tale of grit, independence and a land dispute that went down in history. Let's delve into the fascinating history of the Republic of Indian Stream. This was an unrecognized constitutional republic in North America, nestled between two mighty nations. It found its place along the section of the U.S.-Canada border that separates the Canadian province of Quebec from the U.S. state of New Hampshire. This intriguing country wasn't a figment of imagination, but a real entity that existed in the early 19th century. It was a realm of its own, a small community that declared its independence and operated under its unique constitution. The Republic of Indian Stream is a testament to the complexities of early North American geopolitics. It's a story of a brave community that dared to carve out its identity amidst powerful neighbors. Stay tuned to find out more about the intriguing history of this forgotten country. So, how did the Republic of Indian Stream come into existence? This question takes us back to the closing days of the American Revolutionary War. The Treaty of Paris which ended this war was signed in 1783. However, this treaty left us with ambiguous language concerning the location of the border between the United States and British North America. Now, this ambiguity didn't concern the whole border, but a particular section of it. The area in question was the region around the source of the Connecticut River, a vital waterway for trade and communication. Both Canada and the United States claimed this territory, leading to a unique situation. The people living in this region, mostly American settlers, found themselves in a kind of no-man's land. They were in a place claimed by both the United States and Canada, yet governed by neither. This led to a sense of frustration among the inhabitants, who felt ignored and neglected by both nations. And so, in the year 1832, the inhabitants of this region decided to take matters into their own hands. They declared their independence from both the United States and British North America. The Republic of Indian Stream, as it came to be known, was born. The Republic of Indian Stream was not a large nation. It only covered about 300 square miles, roughly the size of modern-day New York City. Yet, for the people living there, it represented a bold statement of self-determination and independence. So here we have a small nation, nestled between two great powers, born out of a boundary dispute and a desire for self-governance. It's a fascinating chapter in the annals of North American history, one that is often overlooked. But how did this country function, you may ask? Well, that's a story all by itself. Stay tuned as we delve into the inner workings of the Republic of Indian Stream, a nation that dared to be different. The Republic of Indian Stream was more than just a name. It was a living, breathing entity with its unique governance and constitution. A country in its own right that sat nestled between the borders of the United States and Canada. The Republic of Indian Stream was not a mere geographical anomaly. It was a nation that was governed by a constitution, a president, and a three-person council. This was a country that, although unrecognized by the world, operated with the complexity and sophistication of any recognized state. The constitution of the Republic of Indian Stream was a testament to the ideals and principles of its inhabitants. It was a document that was as unique as the land it governed. The constitution was a mixture of American and British laws that reflected the diverse origins of its residents. It provided its citizens with a robust framework for governance and justice, ensuring that each person had a voice in the running of the country. The president and the three-person council were at the heart of this governance. They were responsible for enforcing the laws and maintaining order within the republic. The president was the face of the state, while the council acted as a check and balance, ensuring that power was distributed fairly and justly. The Republic of Indian Stream was a unique experiment in self-governance. It was a testament to the spirit of independence and the will to forge a new path in uncharted territory. It was a country that was born out of necessity and survived through the sheer determination and tenacity of its people. But, as is often the case with such extraordinary experiments, the Republic of Indian Stream faced numerous challenges. It was a country that was unrecognized by the world, a country that was constantly under threat from its larger neighbors. It was a country that was always on the edge, always fighting for its right to exist. However, this independence was not destined to last. 
Despite its unique constitution and governance, the Republic of Indian Stream was a country that was caught between two giants, a country that was struggling to survive in a world that did not recognize its existence. The Republic of Indian Stream's end was as dramatic as its inception. A spark of independence, a symbol of resilience, this tiny nation nestled between the United States and Canada, had a lifespan as brief as a comet's streak across the night sky. But what brought about the downfall of this unique republic? The reasons for the demise of the Republic of Indian Stream were as complex as the circumstances of its birth. The inhabitants, despite their initial determination to govern themselves, grew weary of the constant tug-of-war between the two neighboring giants. The final straw was a series of events that unfolded like a tragic play. A group of Indian Stream residents were arrested and imprisoned by Canadian authorities, a move that left the people of the Republic feeling vulnerable and exposed. In the face of such aggression, the inhabitants of Indian Stream took a decision that was as practical as it was heartbreaking. They voted to request admission to the United States seeking the protection and stability of a larger nation. The spirit of independence that had once burned so brightly was extinguished, replaced by the cold hard reality of political necessity. But the story of Indian Stream did not end with a whimper. The dispute that had given birth to this tiny nation was finally settled, when the Webster-Ashburton Treaty of 1842 clearly defined the international border between the United States and Canada. The ambiguous gray area that had once been the Republic of Indian Stream was now clearly marked, its identity absorbed into the larger fabric of the United States. And so, the Republic of Indian Stream ceased to exist. Its brief life was a testament to the human spirit, a reminder of the drive for self-determination that burns in the heart of every individual. But like all comets, its brilliant streak across the canvas of history was destined to be short-lived. The Republic of Indian Stream was no more. But its memory, its story, would continue to echo down the corridors of time. The Republic of Indian Stream may be forgotten but its story lives on. The Republic of Indian Stream may be a footnote in history books but its story is a testament to the human spirit's yearning for freedom. It reminds us that even the smallest nations can dream big and fight for what they believe in. So, the next time you look at a map remember, there was once a nation, nestled between giants that dared to be different. And who knows maybe one day, its spirit will rise again. If you enjoyed this journey into the past, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel. Also, remember to turn on your post notification bell for more historical explorations. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay curious.